Google Ads has a specific campaign subtype for anyone who's trying to get more subscribers to their YouTube channel. I wish this was around when our channel started. We probably would have used it. In this video, we will show you which campaign goals can use this subtype, and then we'll walk through a full setup so you understand the limitations and what this campaign can do. Then we will walk through the metrics that you can look in reporting to see if the campaign is working. In order for this campaign type to work, there is one mandatory step that you have to do first, and that is connect your YouTube channel to Google Ads. Hopefully, if you're already running video campaigns in Google Ads, you have this step done. In pretty much almost every video campaign, you don't have to have a YouTube channel linked to Google Ads, but if you don't, you don't get any reporting on it. However, in this specific campaign type, if you really want to push for YouTube subscriptions, it is a mandatory feature. So head on over to Tools and then look at Data Manager. We already have it done within this account, so there we see connected products, but here's where you would need to go to either link your YouTube channel for the first time, or you can link multiple YouTube channels to the same Google Ads account. So go up to Connect Product, and then you can just type in YouTube, easy enough. And here we can choose a new link. In this case, we want to link the channel, search for your YouTube channel, just typed in one option, using this purely as an example, if I click Next. In this case, since it's not my channel, I would have to know the email address of the channel owner, send the request, and then I could submit it. Now, since I X'd out of that, there's a tab for sent where any of your requests would be here. And once the channel owner approves, again, it's gonna be a heck of a lot easier if you're the owner of both. Then as you saw when we first came to this page, here's where your linked channels will appear. Once you have a channel linked, you'll be able to create YouTube user audiences to use for remarketing, observations, or targeting, and then you'll get specific video campaign metrics to use for reporting. Now, in terms of this video and the campaign we're gonna create, this will also import subscriptions from this channel as a goal option. You can review that by going to goals and then heading up to summary. And then we want to find the engagement conversion category. Depending on what your account is, you may have to scroll down. There's engagement. And here's where you can review YouTube channel subscriptions. As we can see, it's a YouTube hosted conversion source. Okay, your channel's linked, we're good to go. I'm heading back to campaigns, and then let's start creating a new campaign. So your two options for a YouTube subscription and engagement campaign would be awareness and consideration, or creating a campaign without a goals guidance. Now in so many of our previous videos about YouTube ads, we do say a lot that creating a campaign without a goals guidance typically gives you more control. Well, for this particular campaign type, there's honestly no difference because this is a very specific goal that we want to hit with this campaign. So you might as well just choose awareness and consideration. For our campaign type, of course, we want video. And then we need to scroll down to the bottom and find the proper campaign subtype, YouTube subscriptions and engagements. Now let's click continue. Go ahead and name your campaign, choose your locations, choose your languages. Next, we can review bid strategy. Essentially, the goal is subscriptions. And as we just reviewed before creating the campaign, YouTube subscribers is the goal. So it is a conversion focused campaign. Google does recommend for about the first week or so to start with maximized conversions. And then if you're seeing volume, consider switching over to target CPA. But for this campaign subtype, these are the only two options. Choose a daily budget, a lifetime budget, or add this campaign to a shared library, add a start date or end date if you need to. And then we can look at networks. Just like a video action campaign, since this is in a smaller way conversion focus, we cannot adjust the networks. Even if you create a campaign without a goals guidance, the network settings are locked. There's nothing we can do about it. So let's just move on to assets. And for this campaign subtype, we only get site links. Now for certain video campaigns, again for video action campaign, I believe this one is going away. But there are other campaigns where we can use site links and send users to different pages of your website. But think of the goal of what this campaign is for. It's to try to get more subscriptions. If you're sending people to your website, it's pretty tough to get subscriptions to your YouTube channel. So maybe you want to create site links for the YouTube channel itself. I'm going to save the main channel link for the main URL of our video ads. We'll see when we get there. But for the site links, let's take a look at our YouTube channel. We do have specific playlists. And I can just click on each one or go within each playlist settings, pull the URLs, and start creating site links for any playlist that I want to test. For video campaigns, I just need a minimum of two, but I can add more if I want to. If you're a smaller channel or brand new and you're trying to build your subscriptions, you don't have a lot of playlists yet, maybe start off with individual videos. Try to get them to engage with other content. And then as your channel grows, you can adjust the site links to be a little bit more broad and try to get users to watch even more videos with playlists. If we look at additional settings, here's one where I still recommend that you would choose specific devices and turn off TV screens. 
it's a heck of a lot harder for users to convert from a TV device, especially in this case where not everyone has YouTube on their TV. So definitely consider that action. Frequency capping is still available. I'm not going to talk about it too much. We do have a separate video about frequency capping. You can watch it here. But the last additional setting I think we should focus on is video enhancements because both of these boxes are checked by default. With both of these boxes checked, you're essentially giving Google or YouTube permission to make small edits to your videos. Like in this case, they can make them shorter. Or let's say you only have horizontal videos. Google can format them to try to fit square or vertical placements to expand your reach. I did make a video about square and vertical placements. You could check that one out here. And I do have a few examples where sometimes when Google takes control with video enhancements, it doesn't always look the greatest. So if you don't want Google to change your video in any way, uncheck these boxes, understanding that placements like shorts could be limited if you don't have any vertical video to add. Just understand this is here and it's a default option. Okay, next you can create your ad group. So select your name, choose your audience. And for this subtype, it's always recommended to be targeting an audience that will be interested in your YouTube channel. So hopefully you have creative that speaks to the audience that reflects on a YouTube channel. So our audience right here is anyone who's typed in generic PPC terms on Google properties. So ideally we would have video that speaks more generically about overall paid media. We want to let people know that our channel talks about more things than just Facebook ads. We talk about more things than just Google ads. We have a lot of video variety on our channel. So I'd want to reflect that with the audience I'm targeting. And of course the creative that we will show. So then using just our channel as an example, maybe we want to create a different ad group for a different playlist and then switch our targeting up to only go after users who are interested in just Google ads, just Facebook ads, and then change our site links and our ad URLs to reflect that, to try to make it more specific if we have the creative to back it up. Once we do add an audience, optimized targeting is enabled. I'm going to start without it, see how this performs. And honestly, probably never going to turn it on. In case you're wondering what the advanced settings are, it's kind of worthless for this subtype. It's the same rule that's applied to video action campaigns currently. Since it is a conversion focused campaign, we can no longer use content targeting like going after specific placements, specific websites, specific videos. Extremely unfortunate. So now let's create our video ads. And since we're not actually going to run this as a real campaign for us, we don't have a great 30 second, 15 second video. So I'm just going to grab one and just paste it in here. No, I don't have this video in other formats, but we can add up to five videos. In this case, if I did have a square and vertical version, I would definitely put it within the same ad. Or if I have different variants of a certain video, maybe I'm testing out a different hook, different intro in the beginning. I would consider adding them within the same ad, but I would also test them out as different ads. But then here, since I'm trying to drive subscriptions, I want to pull in the actual channel URL and then we can add up to five calls to action. Let's get a couple in there. Subscribe will be the main one, right? Let's test out some more. Watch now is a good one. Don't like the learn more one. Start now a little bit more action focused. Fine. I get two more. Like many of the newer video ads, we get to add up to five headlines, 30 characters each up to five long headlines, 90 characters each, and then up to five descriptions, 90 characters each. I'm not going to bore you with this. I'm just going to type in one example of each and then we'll move on here. It looks like a basic in-stream ad. Here's our call to action extension, looking at a different format. Here's what an in-feed version of the ad can look like. And this is where the text portion, like our headlines and the descriptions play in. And then on a mobile device, we do see that in-stream ads now really take up much more real estate. And here's where some of our headlines will pop in. Won't be cut off like that. I just have my browser zoomed in a lot, but add in your ad combinations like you normally would. If you go to the ad creation tab here, you can create several video ad variants before you're done or go up to another ad and click duplicate if you want to just make small tweaks, but finish with your ad copy and then you can create the campaign. Okay. It's ready. We'll go back to the overview here. I'm in the specific campaign. I want to look at our ad group level. And once it's running, you probably want to see how it's performing in terms of getting you subscriptions. There's a couple ways that we can do that. If you head to columns right here, I'd look at modifying the columns. I already have a set here, but if you go to modify, the main one you will want will fall under conversions. And we already have that one locked in. YouTube subscribers will count towards your main conversion total. But what this campaign subtype is also good at doing is driving earned actions. These additional actions are free after you've already paid for an interaction. So if you've already been charged for an ad interaction and the user goes on to like certain videos, add your videos to a playlist, share your video, watch additional videos, we will be able to count all of those metrics. When I'm reviewing any video performance, especially anything that's running in-stream ads, I always review these numbers. We'll just apply these 
And then when it's running, we can review conversions here. If you're also tracking other conversions, you can always go up and segment, choose conversions and conversion action, and then you'll get the conversion numbers broken down if you really wanna see just the YouTube subscribe numbers. If I click out of that and I scroll over, besides view rate, you may wanna check how your video is played to, see where people might be dropping off. And then here's where you can review your earned actions to see if it's providing more. That's why the campaign subtype is YouTube subscriptions and engagement. In case you were wondering, syncing up the YouTube channel will help towards actual subscription conversions, but any earned actions won't show up until the YouTube channel is linked. When the campaign is running, it will only optimize for actual subscriptions. The earned actions is purely just for reporting to see if the user performed any other actions after they engaged with our campaign. Any earned subscribe actions use a seven day view through conversion attribution. And that is the specific subtype that Google has created to try to boost subscriptions to your YouTube channel. We have seen decent earned subscribe numbers from other video campaign types within Google. However, this is the only one where the sole focus is to try and give you as many subscribers as possible. If you've tested this out, we'd love to hear how it's working for you. So let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.